Hello friends, welcome back to Sack's Garage. I am Sack and this is my garage. Today, we're starting off with the Rainbird. It has developed a squeak in the back left. I can hear it when my window's down and I'm departing a stop sign or a light. It uh, increases with wheel speed, so I suspect either there's something wrong with the brakes, uh, the wheel bearing's going bad, or something with the U-joints. So we're gonna check that out, see what it is. And if we need to order parts, we'll order parts and get that fixed another day. And then after that, we're back to the transmission. It's just been sitting on the floor. The uh, first clutch isn't going back like it should. Sorry for the lawnmower noise. Uh, that's the neighbor. And uh, maybe just add a little bit of transmission fluid, see if just a little bit of lubrication helps those clutches slip back uh, where they're supposed to go. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, first test. Up off the ground, we're gonna spin it. I don't hear any squeaking. So it's either there's no load on the bearing and it's not doing that, or it's gonna be the uh, U-joints on the drive shaft. So let's get started, put it in gear and see what it does. So we just took it for a test drive. We couldn't get it to squeak sitting here on the jack stand. So we took it for a drive and it only squeaks on acceleration. So I'm down to either a bad wheel bearing or a bad U-joint. The U-joints look original and it has 165,000 miles on it so it wouldn't surprise me if those are bad but we're going to take one wheel off here see how the wheel bearing looks and then go from there all right i checked the wheel bearing it looked good uh my parking brake uh pads definitely need to be replaced otherwise this brake looks good i'm uh I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this. I'm gonna chalk it up to the U-joints since they're originals. It happens only under acceleration. So adding that extra load to the drive shaft, uh, not necessarily when we're just coasting. So I don't think it's the wheel bearing. So we're gonna get this put back together. All right, real quick before we jump into the 6R80 uh, transmission rebuild, I had the idea of putting the GoPro under the truck and seeing if I could further diagnose. So I hooked it up. Uh, on one of the exhaust hanger clips uh, with the little like spider mount that I have and uh, just to see if I would get anything. What you'll see here, I'm gonna show you two videos. First one is uh, normal speed and you'll see that if you look at the, the weights on the drive shaft, as they come up the left side from behind is when the squeak kind of starts and then there's like a secondary squeak when they get to the right side of the drive shaft. Uh, so that basically confirms that it's something in the drive shaft, whether it's the pinion bearing or the U-joints. I suspect it's probably the U-joints because it only happens under load. And if you watch the whole rear end, you'll see that it kind of drives up like that. So as it's creating that angle, that's probably making the U-joints unhappy because they're probably old and dried out. So I'm going to show you that one in real time. Uh, not the full clip, just enough to show you the squeaks. And then I'm going to slow it down for you so that you can see the frames as they go a little bit slower and see where the squeak exactly picks up on the left side and has that secondary one on the right side. This is a fair audio warning though. Uh, quarter speed sound does not sound great. So if you wanna turn down your volume now, I'd recommend doing that now. Here we go. We wrapped up about 10 minutes ago. It was still decently sunny out, but there were some dark clouds kind of on the horizon. And now we're uh, we're looking at this and uh, looking at the radar. Yeah, we're uh, definitely finished right on time. So we're gonna move on to the transmission. really coming down out there barely see the towers over there those are maybe a mile away at most the ditch is full 
it's not quite raining sideways, but it's at a decent angle. The uh, radar shows purple is uh, just north of us over that way. Pretty gnarly. Glad I mowed the grass yesterday, it looks good. We are back in the garage between thunderstorms here. Checking out this clutch. It's been about two or three weeks since we checked it, so it may have reset by this point. Let's see. All right, so it definitely went once, but it didn't reset. But what I found from before is if I kind of smack it around a little bit, it'll retest. So, I don't know if you heard it clunk there again, but it definitely re-clunked. So I'm going to just take this front cover back off and uh, see if maybe uh, putting some lube in there will make it reset better. Just because I'm crazy, I decided to try it one more time, and it seems to be working fine. So I'm just giving it shorter bursts of air, and it seems to check okay. Listen. You can hear that it resets every time, so I think we're good. I may have just been using too much air pressure. I uh, I didn't fill up the compressor all the way this time. I have it turned down to, I think, 50 PSI, but I already used a little bit. So actually, let's go see what the compressor is at. As far as what it's putting out, it's right about 50-ish. So that, uh, ooh, that rain's starting to come down again. Yeah, so anyway, I guess I'm going to uh, put this transmission back together. We got to get the valve battery back on, got to clean up the gasket, get that all sealed up, and we'll be good to go. All right, about 45 minutes later, it is back together. Valve train's in, pan's on, obviously it's upside down. We uh, got to clean this up. Part of our upgrade process is we're going to install a external cooler on this thing. Uh, that's remote mounted, probably in the bed. Otherwise, this thing is ready to go back in after a good cleaning. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Sax Garage. That's a good shop dog, Holly. And we'll see you next time.